Hello and welcome to The Video Creator Show. Today, I'm speaking with Steph, the secret slob. But first, The Video Creator Show is brought to you by vidchops.com, an editing service that helps take the burden of editing off your back. Check out vidchops.com to see how you can save yourself tons of time and energy while taking your YouTube channel to the next level. And now, I'm speaking with Steph, the secret slob. Uh, Steph, instead of uh, me introducing you and kind of telling people what you're all about, what you do, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, fill people in on, on everything your YouTube channel is about? Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Steph. I started a YouTube channel called The Secret Slob about four years ago now, and it took off unexpectedly. I didn't know a lot about YouTube, and I kind of fell into this world, but it's been a ton of fun. And now I do you know, Instagram, YouTube. I have Facebook motivation. I have a website. It's just become basically a job for me, but a really fun job. Mm -hmm. And so why did you get into this in the first place? Uh, this is a question I like to ask people. It, it's just kind of fascinating to know people's motivation for getting online in the first place. Because having an online presence, um, it can be a weird job, uh, whether it's part-time or full-time. So I'm just wondering, like, what was your goal for starting out here? Right. So I started out making YouTube videos strictly for myself. I was a secret slob or I was a slob at heart. I couldn't keep my house clean. It was a mess. I wanted to have better housekeeping habits. And I was watching some YouTubers kind of show how they were doing it. And for accountability, I decided I would make myself some videos. And I didn't expect anybody to watch them. I didn't intend for anybody. I mean, I guess it's fine that people watch them, but I never thought, I never knew anything about the YouTube world. So I do call myself kind of the accidental YouTuber. Uh, I was making videos for a year, just having fun. I think like six to 25 people watched them and just having a good time. And then I had one that went viral. And I guess that, well, for me, that was from, you know, 100 views per video to about 100,000 in a week. So pretty big. And um, it was my sister who said, this is a door that's open for you. And I think you should walk through it. So I never, I guess it's hard for me to say that I had intentions of being online and having a presence because I really just had intentions of helping myself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so uh, your name, The Secret Slob, uh, and your banner says cleaning motivation routines. So clearly, uh, like being a quote unquote slob is something you've struggled with. It's certainly something I struggle yeah. with. Uh, a lot of your videos have to do with cleaning and organization. Um, so like, why why did you decide to focus on, on this? Because I think like for me, I guess the idea of getting official about it and making videos about uh, something like this, uh, it wouldn't necessarily occur to me. So was there a, a reason in particular that you wanted to focus so hard on the like cleaning and organization aspect of things? Yeah, well, I have three little kids. And at the time when I started, I had two. I had had my second baby and my house was a disaster and I was disorganized and it was driving me crazy. And just like any goal, I wanted to kind of just be better. And so I started making the videos for accountability. And and just keep in mind that when I started making them, I really expected them to just live in the nether sphere of the tiny little channels. I didn't ever expect it to get big. I never expected anybody to watch. I mean, the greatest surprise about having people discover it and find it is knowing that I'm not alone. I wasn't the only one with this same issue. And so that's how I found a lot of people is people who really, truly and genuinely mm -hmm. relate to the situation that I was in. Yeah, and like that's one very common thing with YouTube or or maybe like any sort of thing where you're in the public eye in general is you kind of have people who they just share their experience, their perspective, and it just so happens that other people connect with it and want to watch. Uh, and it's kind of a beautiful thing. It's amazing how often that happens and how naturally that can work. Um, and speaking of work, uh, I am curious in what ways have you monetized your channel? So like, uh, I, I know you said you have a website and uh, you've kind of, you've walked through the door, so yeah. to speak. So uh, can you talk about like how you've monetized your channel and the business aspect of things? Sure, yeah. So like I said before, it was strictly a hobby. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that you could make money from YouTube, which I 
feel is a very genuine <laughs> and really positive way to start because, you know, I was starting from all the right places with something I really wanted to do. Um, but once I got there and kind of got to the, the parameters that you needed to have to monetize, I monetized on YouTube first and kind of went with that for a while and just was really surprised at the money you can make just from YouTube alone. And that was really fun, just side money. And then I started doing, what did I start doing after that? My website. And so I get kind of like Google ad money from that. And then the big thing that I kind of do now for, in terms of monetizing my business is I started creating these printables. And so they're just exactly what I'm doing. People can purchase them as a little package and then they can implement the system that I'm using themselves. And so I sell those through my website and that's been kind of the more businessy side of side of things that isn't, that's, that's entirely me and not through Google or things like that. I do do a few sponsorships on my channel too, but I, not too many. I have really strict rules about who I'll work with. So which is always smart. Uh, I, I think uh, being picky about sponsors is always a good long-term move. Yeah. So as far as your printables, like these are things that can help you with organization. Yeah, basically. So I like I like to call myself the coach or the YouTuber for the beginner, beginner, the beginner's beginner, people that have literally no idea where to start, no idea that there are systems out there or what they could even do, right? I think a lot of people know what they should be doing and aren't. And that's fine. That's a whole other thing. This is for people like me who had no homemaking, house cleaning training at all. Um, you know, I was raised by a single mom. She was working. She was busy. She did her best. But I really didn't, I didn't have a clue coming out of that situation, what I was supposed to do to keep my house organized. And everything always felt chaotic. So I like to teach like people just like me how they can pull themselves out of that situation. And so the principles is just something to follow along with, like a worksheet kind of, or just a, a, so they can keep everything organized. Gotcha. And I, I think you're you're doing a good job of really like nailing your brands, uh, you know, cleaning motivation routines. The I it, I didn't even think that this could be a thing that you could sell, but clearly you're selling it and it's, it's working very well. And your audience is like they they love watching what you do. Um, and I, I think it's always fascinating when I talk to somebody who is able to kind of like turn something I never even thought of into a business. Yeah. Um, and props to you for that. I made this whole brand and this whole business around what I wish that I had had when I first started out. So everything that I sell is things that I actually use myself and things that I wish I could have had to start out with. So it's it's pretty much just exactly what I use at home, so. So when your videos first started taking off um, and you, you said your sister said you should walk through this door, um, did your life change in any kind of profound way or interesting way um, beyond just that you were focusing more on YouTube? Like, do you feel YouTube gave you a certain amount of freedom? Um, financially, no. Like, this has always been our secondary income. My husband's income is the primary one. But for me, on a personal level, yes, 100%. I am a stay-at-home mom. I chose this. I love doing this. I was a scientist in my previous life. Um, but it's given me kind of this outlet into the adult world. When you're a stay-at-home mom like I am and you're with little kids all day, every day, you know, you can go a little bit batty. And so having this project that is strictly mine, has nothing to do with my children, allows me to be creative, express myself, and join the adult world, and then make a little bit of money, which is always fun, has been just an, an incredible opportunity for me. And I think it's the reason I'm able to, you know, stay at home with my kids and still fulfill that need that I have in myself to be driven and ambitious. Mm -hmm. Right on. And that, I, I think it's great how you're able to turn your sort of everyday life and your goals and the things that you've tried to get better at over the years into a show, essentially. <laughs> uh, do you have any advice for people who are essentially trying to do what you're doing? So trying to do what I'm doing on YouTube? Yeah, like oh, okay. uh, the sort of uh, just turning your life into a show. Like, uh, you know, you have Rainbow Girls room makeover, <laughs> right. uh, house update, finally. Like you're, you're kind of just letting people into your life sure. and turning it into uh, not just entertainment, but also a, you know, an informative view on what's going on. Yeah. Um, so I guess the advice that I give everyone that says, you know, I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel. How did you do this? What should I do? I always tell them the same thing pick something that you would do for free and you want to make videos about for years and years and years because it could take off like mine did, but it might not. So choose something you're genuinely interested in. And also when you're doing something you're interested in, 
that is going to have way more appeal to people because you're going to be able to appear genuine. You're going to seem like enthusiastic about it and interested, and you'll be able to stick with it for the long run. And as I'm sure a lot of people have said to you, it's it's more about consistency than hitting that one viral video or having like the greatest idea. Showing up on YouTube and online consistently will get you way further in the long run. So I always just say, do something you actually want to keep making videos about. Right. And then, so as far as your website uh, and selling these printables, can you go into detail on like how you were able to set that up? Like, uh, did you work with another company to do this? Um, do you kind of make this at home by yourself? Like, how how does the the back end of your your sales work? Sure. Okay. So when I started out, it was a one woman show for a long time. And I made all the printables myself using Canva, using the free version of Canva. And I started my website by myself. I built it on WordPress. I had never done any web design. I used YouTube, learned how, kind of did it step by step. And I had a really rudimentary site at first. I mean, at first I just shared everything on Google Docs. And then I built my site and I was able to share. And then my sister started helping me. And I also have a an assistant, like a VA, who works with me part-time. And she really helped send everything through. And it was her husband that kind of des- re- rebranded and redesigned my site. So it was a little bit more professional and could handle the transactions and things like that. Okay. So it, it was kind of a, a combination of like your own labor and people you hired and, and worked with uh, and knew that kind of brought this whole project together. Yeah. And so uh, like I see you have a podcast and a blog. Um, do you kind of cover the same topics on there, but in more detail? Like, can you tell us more about um, like your your podcast, a blog? The, these are things a lot of people like to do. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm just curious, like what how you do it. For sure. So I was feeling like I love YouTube. It's definitely my number one place I like to be. I love talking. I love making videos, but I like the idea of the blog because it gives me a a place to put things down on paper. I know I'm very visual. I like to see things written out in a list. So a lot of times the blog is really just my YouTube videos reiterated so that they're there. You could, you could print them off if you needed a lot of step-by-step stuff, things like that. So I use the blog just to kind of reiterate the information and really help people get a feel for what they could be doing or how the systems work. The podcast, on the other hand, is a whole different animal altogether. That is started by my sister and I. She has been a guest on my YouTube channel a few times. She's super popular. She also runs my Facebook accountability and motivation group, which is community led, but she's kind of oversees it. That's her primary role. And so her and I wanted to start a podcast and it's in the vein of what I'm doing on YouTube, but it's way more kind of relaxed, just casual talk. We like to just talk about our lives and the failures and the successes. And there's a lot of like funny stuff going on in there. So whereas I feel like my YouTube channel is really informative, how to, the podcast is way more casual, really get to know us a little bit more on a personal level. Gotcha. And uh, I, I notice your Instagram is doing quite well. You have over 29,000 followers. Um, it is pretty difficult to grow on Instagram as far as I know. Like you talk <laughs> about how you got it to that point and like your your sort of strategy for getting there. Sure. Yeah. You know, like it's it's embarrassing how little I know about these things and then how well I've done. And I'm not just trying to be humble. I really don't know. And I really feel like the Instagram has just trickled over from YouTube for the most part. I just share really sporadically kind of, I have no theme. I have no aesthetic. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing. And and I think that's the brand that I've kind of created again by accident is just being myself, being genuine. If I don't show up for two months, people kind of expect that. They're like, oh, well, she's tired as usual. I've got three kids or I'll show up every day because I've got something exciting to share and exciting going on. I don't have a strategy For Instagram, it's really just kind of hit and miss, but I I love sharing on there, but it's really YouTube where I can be a little bit more consistent and my blog and my podcast and stuff. The Instagram is just, you get what you get (laughs) over there. (laughs) And it, it seems like it's working. And I think one thing that's interesting to note is because your channel is so personality based, like obviously you're you're front and center on most of the videos and it's about your life. Um, like these types of channels, I think 
do notoriously well on social media. Um, they do well for getting people uh, from YouTube onto different platforms because one of the hardest things uh, about YouTube can be getting your audience to kind of leave the platform to check out something else, whether that's your Instagram or your website or whatever. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of power in the sort of like uh, – simple personality based um but like interesting entertaining videos that that you do um so like my channel treesicle um was my full-time job for many years and uh like they were very entertaining videos but they were essentially video essays and uh i didn't even show my face for maybe the first three or four years of the channel um and we had a lot of trouble getting people to uh, you know, go to uh, our social pages, uh, whether it was Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Um, and I've just noticed talking to a lot of people like you, that channels like yours, um, there's like, um, you have sort of a, I don't want to say cult following, but you have a very diehard following. Uh, because I think people think that uh, they feel like they connect with you because they do. And you're you're just kind of showing up being yourself. Um, you've even said yourself that you uh, like you don't really have a strategy. You kind of <laughs> just show up and make videos you want to make and post pictures you want to post. Yeah. Um, and then people just keep on watching. Yeah. And um, I think that is a valid strategy in and of itself. And yeah, for, for those listening, because obviously this podcast is about how to succeed on YouTube, um, you, there, there's a lot of power in just kind of, um, and like I've said this a million times on this podcast, but authenticity, but more importantly, I think just like uh, showing up and being like a, a, a personality, just kind of having yourself there and showing your life authentically. Um, and yeah, you don't even have to have a strategy necessarily as long <laughs> as you're consistent. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um... And you hit the nail on the head, right? Just show up and be yourself. And we've been told this since we were kids. Just be yourself. You're the best version of you. You know, nobody else does you better than you. And chances are pretty much everybody out there, if they can just, you know, strip back that layer and just be totally authentic, people want to see what you're doing. It's interesting. And, and to be honest, I don't share a huge portion of my life. My husband has never been on the videos. I think he's maybe made like a 20 second cameo once. He's never there. Um, my kids, I don't share their names. I don't share information about them. There's pictures of them. And obviously they sometimes get in the videos, but in terms of my personal life, there's a ton I don't share. And I, and I highly recommend having those boundaries up because letting the entire world in just, you know, leaves room for opinions and, and just kind of shaming and things like that. And my group, my community is an incredible group of people. We have, I would say like 0.1% trolls ever even find us. And I like to keep it that way. I always say like, don't let all the trolls know where we are. Cause we have such a great group. Um, but really it's just like, I think me just, you know, bearing my vulnerableness and just letting people know it's okay. And the funny thing about it is I kept this whole thing a secret from my friends and most of my family for over two years. No one even knew I did this, even after it got popular. Um, I just, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed to be vulnerable with people I knew. <laughs> hmm. So why, why did you feel that way? Do you think, um, did you, were you worried they were going to watch your videos and judge you or something? Did you think, uh, like, I, I'm just very curious. Usually, uh, when I talk to people about having a successful YouTube channel, they kind of light up and they're uh, very happy about it, happy to share it. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just curious why you felt that way for so long. Um, I think it wasn't so much being on YouTube that made me feel uncomfortable. It was more the idea surrounding what I was doing, just being really messy and showing my house being a mess and me saying, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I think for a long time, I tried to put out this facade to people I knew that, I could, I had it all together and everything was great. And so letting people into that world was letting them know, Hey, guess what? <laughs> Cats out of the bag. I actually am terrible at this. And now, you know, so I was always really about keeping up appearances to people I knew. Um, and, and it's easier sometimes to bear it all on the internet to a bunch of strangers than it is to the people, you know, so my family knew, and we talked about it really enthusiastically. And once it's out, like, I mean, I love talking about it now. I love encouraging people to do this because it's so much fun. Um, but yeah, it was, it was two good years before anybody knew about it. And I, I think in a way that's better, uh, like a, a lot of people get caught up in the, the, 
fame or the notoriety or they they want attention essentially and you you kind of went the opposite route um you you hid it from the people you knew uh <laughs> you were kind of just posting videos and having a good time as you said uh like it seemed like fame was sort of secondary to you um and i i think there is a ton of power in that like uh like we we talk business on this podcast a lot but uh half the battle is always mindset oh yeah and i, I think when you're coming from that place of i don't care if i'm famous. I don't <laughs> even care if this works necessarily. Uh, not in an in aloof way, but just in a uh, uh, you're just showing up to do what you want to do kind of way. That is always the best place to come from. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is this can be so much fun, but you just have to have so much fun with it and let it go. And, and uh, yeah, just like you say, show up. I didn't know, I mean, I guess that there's no fame component for me because I wasn't even aware of these possibilities that there are, right? And the best part of the, I guess you could say fame component for me is that now I get to, you know, meet people, other YouTubers that I really admire and I can talk to them and we're on the same level in a, in a way. And so that's been the best part for me is just connecting with some of my people that I look up to. For real. And um, going back to what you said about this, you kind of have a filter uh, about what you actually show on your channel. Like you don't show your kids very often. Your husband is rarely in the videos. Um, like one thing I've heard a lot of vloggers talk about, and you're, you're like kind of in the vlogging sphere, maybe adjacent to it, um, is like they end up vlogging every aspect of their life and you can really lose your mind just doing that. Um, I, I think there is like, they're almost trying too hard to be authentic. Like they just kind of shove the camera in people's faces or, uh, you know, just are, are always filming everything. And, uh, it can really destabilize your personal relationships. Okay. Uh, and you know, your, your kind of interpersonal relationships are obviously the foundation of, uh, maybe your mental health. Uh, they're the foundation of your life and YouTube, I think is, is, should be secondary to all of that. So, um, just for, for those listening, like, um, yeah, be careful, be very careful if, uh, you do get into this scene because you may feel a pull to want to include everything. Did you ever feel that way? Like you almost wanted to show too much, um, and you kind of had to pull yourself back. I mean, in a way I want to share, like I want to share what my kids' names are because I think they're fantastic names and I want to share what they're doing. And I want to talk about me and my husband and our relationship more just because it's, you know, I just love sharing. But again, it's that boundary where it's, you just have to make a decision up front whether you want to do that or not. Because once you go down that road, you can't take it back. Once you've shared these things, you cannot take them back. And actually I did see a YouTuber who's in the cleaning vlogging adjacent sphere. Um, her channel is called Love Meg. And I used to watch her because she does cleaning inspiration. And one of the things she said in one of her how to mm. YouTube videos was I she wished she hadn't shared her last name. And so I didn't share, I don't share my last name. I don't share information about where I live. I just, I just think those things need to be private. So again, like you said, you can keep the two worlds separate. They are separate and they should be kept that way. I am as genuine as I am, I feel like on YouTube, if you listen to the podcast, you'll notice I'm like a little bit more relaxed. Like it's still me, but I'm a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more kind of giggly and go with the flow. I feel like it's the less formal version of my well-behaved self. And then there's me at home, right? Like sweatpants and, you know, getting upset with my husband and me and my kids trying to figure stuff out. We all kind of have these different worlds. And I think it's so important to separate them. Totally agree. And uh, that that line, I think, maybe can be placed differently depending on what stage of life somebody's in, who they're surrounded by. You know, if you're like a, a 20 year old living in a YouTube clout house in L.A. or something, then I don't know, maybe just film whatever as long as yeah. most people are comfortable with it. But, uh, you know, someone like you, you have a family and uh, like it just it's a different life. Yeah. And I think it's important to be aware of kind of who you are and where you're at in life and sort of adjust accordingly. Sure. Um, so I. 
I, I'm glad that you were able to find that balance for yourself. Uh, that's, uh, you know, crucial to your long-term success and to happiness as well. Um, so shifting gears here, you mentioned sponsorships a little bit earlier. Uh, sponsorships are obviously a, they can be very helpful for, for monetizing, kind of making uh, some extra money for a channel. Uh, can you tell us about what sponsors you have? I, I know you have True Earth. Um, and like, how did you find them? Uh, did they come to you? Did you reach out to them? Uh, how, like, is, is it a flat rate? Is it commission? Uh, or can, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So True Earth in particular, who I've worked with for the longest and most regular, um, they came to me, but I, like I said, I have kind of this preset of standards of people I'll work with. So they have to be environmentally friendly. They have to be, um, just doing good things. I, I won't use I won't support things that I don't actually use and believe in and would spend my own money on, which everybody says, but I don't think everybody actually means. <laughs> and so Truers came to me mm -hmm. and they sent me some product. I said, yeah, I'll try it. And if I like it, then we can talk further. So they sent it to me and I tried it and I loved it. And I love that they're from British Columbia. They're doing good things for the planet. Their their motto and their whole idea behind their company is amazing. And so I just love working with them. And the person that I work directly with is really incredible to work with. You know, I've ha I have things come up with my kids and she'll extend my deadlines and things like that. In terms of payment, I get a flat fee for my videos. And then I do have a commissionable link that I use as well through share a sale with them. And they give me a higher, a higher percentage rate than just their standard one. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And so was there like a negotiation process involved with that? Because I, I think a lot of people wonder like, oh, how does how does this go down exactly? So uh, you said they came to you. Um, and then did you have to negotiate for the flat fee? Did they just kind of offer something and you were like, that sounds like a great deal? Um, like, how, how did that work? Yeah, so they were one of my first sponsors, I think just my second sponsor I ever had. And so when I first started out, I was just like, sure. I'll take money for doing this. That sounds great, <laughs> you know, and I didn't really know as time's gone on. I kind of figured out what my price range is, where I'm supposed to be at. And so as because when they started with me, I think I had like 40,000 followers or subscribers and now I have 150. And so I said, well, the price has to change because, <laughs> you know, you're getting more exposure and I'm getting bigger and they're they're fine with that. So pretty much we will um, get into a contract for a set period of time and then usually just renegotiate. Um, every time we renew the contract and, and they've been really good to me. I love working with them. Mm -hmm. Right on. And, uh, like, I'm glad that you were able and willing to renegotiate. Uh, I, I've heard some people, they can be nervous about accepting sponsors too soon because they're worried, uh, once they agree to a price that they can never change it. But clearly, I mean, that's not the case. I've certainly renegotiated prices myself. Uh, you've obviously done it. And uh, yeah, just, you know, for, for those wondering, like, you, it's not a long term commitment unless you sign like a five year contract or something, yeah, which you should that. never do. I would only <laughs> like a max of a year, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I usually work in like six months, three Maybe to six, six months, months in increments. Um, but yeah, definitely renegotiate. And these people are used to it. Like this isn't they're not going to be like, what? <laughs> renegotiate. They are expecting it. They're just that's totally just part of their job. So it's it's not a big deal. The worst they can say is, no, how about this? Aim high. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, you know, like it, it's a lot of work to maintain a YouTube channel, a lot of effort. And always like I, I tell people, always like know your worth and respect yourself and don't feel awkward about talking about money. Uh, I think money is it can be a weird topic for people because I, I guess a lot of things come down to money. It feels like there's a lot at stake. Um, and in some ways it can be like a measure of self-worth, I think. And when you start talking about it or trying to negotiate it, um, people, I don't know, they, they get nervous, their insecurities sort of pop up. And I think just money is okay to talk about. It's okay to ask for more money. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to be greedy or whatever, but just keep in mind that if your views go up, then uh, your money should go up. Yeah. And uh, one thing that, uh, so I, I had an agent that I worked with who would kind of bring us deals over the years. Um, and he would always say, like, for every 100,000 views, you should be making about $3,000. Um, so that's just kind of like a good, like, 
estimate, I think, to work with. Um, and so I, I just wanted to throw that out there for for people to to just kind of know that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's been in the industry forever. He knows prices. Um, and yeah, and I'll always get a flat rate too. Yeah. Um, like commissions are cool, but you never really know how a sponsorship is going to perform. So, you know, you may end up giving a sponsor free publicity for a product that uh, people don't like that much. Uh, and then you, you're kind of left holding the bag. So yeah. always get a flat rate, uh, perhaps on top of commission. So, yeah. yeah. And another thing that I think is important to mention, because I do have some friends that do Instagram, YouTube kind of starting out, always get a flat rate. You don't have to do anything for free product. They, a lot of sponsors will try to say, well, we'll give you this if you'll make, you know, a four minute video about this and that and the other thing. I mean, absolutely not. This is your job you have value, you need to get paid for it. So you should be getting a product so that you can try it out and genuinely back it and some money for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like, so with your channel where it's at right now, uh, I know you just moved uh, somewhat recently to a large plot of land. Uh, there's uh, a lot of remodeling to do. Yeah. Um, are you like, do you have any plans for the future of your channel? Uh, are you kind of just going to keep doing what you're doing? Uh, tell us what you got in store next. That's my question. Right. So this year was kind of crazy for me. My whole channel was built and all my routines and everything I did was built in that last house. And so this last year has been a real roller coaster. and I've shared a little bit and just kind of told people, you know, I'm struggling. I'm in this house. We've just started our remodel. We're actually living in the backyard. I'm in my basement right now with all of our stuff. And so things are definitely up in the air but my plan is just to share how I get through that because just like everybody else um, I'm going through a big change that happens to everyone where we get thrown in the deep end of life and have to figure out a way to manage and so I I think I'll just probably share how I manage how I manage living in my backyard <laughs> with my three kids how we work on the reno and just kind of share the process and mostly just share how to keep it together or somewhat together while we go I've definitely planned to scale back though this summer I can't overcommit to things. I, I'm not committing to any sponsorships because those deadlines kind of loom and then it, it's a lot to get the stuff out on time for me. So, and generally that's why I stay away from sponsorships too, is I can just kind of do things at my own pace. Yeah, very smart. And uh, like, you know, you're you're managing being uh, a mom, a wife, a YouTuber, a, a, a remodeler of your house. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're balancing things, uh, intelligently. And, um, so do you have any advice for people who like, this is going to sound super generic, but like how to live their, their best life. So, I mean, you've, you've moved out into the country. Um, you've bought some land. Uh, you're, uh, you're essentially doing what you want to do, it seems like. Uh, and I think your channel has really succeeded because of that. You know, if you were trying to force yourself into, I don't know, like you wanted to have the house in the suburbs and hang out with the, the all the fancy people. And, you know, like uh, a lot of people, maybe they're like chasing status or something or they're not willing to move out into the middle of nowhere uh, and sort of live a, a quiet life. But you were, um, perhaps you've been moving towards this. Um, and like, it's, it can be hard to take these next big steps. Uh, like, do you have advice to people who are trying to take, uh, some big steps? Like they have dreams, but they're sort of nervous about actually making them happen. Yeah. So I think, and this is something that I practice my whole life is it just doesn't hurt to try. Just try things, try everything. Things are going to flop. Things are going to fail. I try all kinds of things. I set these crazy huge goals. I mean, I share that on my channel. I'm going to do this crazy thing. And then sometimes I just don't. And I say, well, that didn't work out. And sometimes I set these huge goals, like I'm going to start this podcast and it's just exploded. It's doing so well. And we're having so much fun with it. I think the name of the game is if you're not, if you're not beholden to it for your you know, financial welfare and it's not fun for you, don't do it. <laughs> this stuff has to be fun. Otherwise, it will drain you. We've all talked about YouTube, YouTuber burnout and influencer burnout. If you are not having fun, no one watching you is having fun <laughs> either. Yeah, that is a fact. I um like during my several years on the platform, uh, it started out as 
fun. I was having a blast. And then I there was sort of a like decline of the channel. Like the views were fine, but um, I, uh, I think it stagnated because I sort of was just showing up to do a job after a certain point. And I liked what I was doing. I didn't really love it. Um, and people can sense that you mm -hmm. kind of end up alienating the people who really love your authentic self and replacing those people with people who are showing up for, I don't they're just showing up for fair weather reasons. Yeah. Uh, for reasons that aren't that interesting to you. And you, you really don't want to select for that kind of audience uh, because they're going to want things from you that you don't even want from yourself. Yeah. Um, and it's like very – once you dig yourself into that hole, it's hard to get out. Yeah. Um, and for me, like the only way I was able to get out was just to kind of take a step back from my channel in general uh, and focus on other things. Like I'm doing this podcast now and, you know, I have other clients I work with and um, I'm more behind the scenes now uh, when it comes comes to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and I like it that way um, because, I don't know, I just kind of don't have to think about, <laughs> um, am I enjoying this? Am I loving this? I don't know. It, yeah. it can be exhausting sometimes. Yeah, totally. And I think with having a YouTube channel, you know, I get tons of requests for videos people want to see. And I love that. I mean, I love knowing what people want to see, but at the same time, I still have to say like, okay, I love that idea, but I just, that's not going to work for me. So I can't do that one. Or, you know, I love this. People want to always, are always asking me like, how do I work this system if you're a full-time working mom? And I was like, I can't tell you. I'm not a full-time working mom. My sister is a full-time working mom. And so that's a video we made. And she actually made the video and, you know, it did really well. And I just gave her, well, I gave her an e-bike because it, it made so much money that one through YouTube and she really wanted an e-bike. So I bought her an e-bike with the money that that one made. Um, so she was able to show it, but you know, I think people are always asking of you sponsor sponsors are asking of you. People want more more and more. And, and as long as you're only giving what you can give and it can just be really genuine, you're not stretching yourself out. It can be fun forever and, and taking breaks. I took a huge break last year and didn't even tell anyone it was really bad. I should have said like, Hey, I need a break. But I like literally just vanished from the face of the internet <laughs> for like three months. <laughs> Believe me, I understand. I <laughs> haven't posted to my channel in like 10 months okay. and uh, it can feel really good. Uh, you're just like, oh my God, I don't have to show up in front of a camera yeah. and be uh, all happy and peppy or whatever. Yeah, but then um, when you come uh, back, you're It can you're be like, very cathartic to do whatever the heck you want. Yeah, and when you come back, you're just like a way better version of yourself because you're happy to be back. It's like seeing an old friend again, so. Yep, super true. <laughs> um, and so now like you... Uh, it sounds like you're you're doing a lot of big remodeling. You're living in your backyard and kind of dealing with that. Like um, it, it sounds like you have a lot of like f fun, interesting things on the horizon here. Um, like so, do you have any advice for people who are uh, they maybe are doing pretty well on YouTube, but uh, they're at that point maybe you were at in your early stages where you were posting, uh, but you weren't getting much traction yet. Uh, maybe somebody has been in that stage for longer than they want to, and they're kind of frustrated and yeah. it feels like everything is right. They have all the right ingredients, but it hasn't taken off. What advice would you give to someone in that position? Oh man, like I feel like I can't even give advice because mine happened so unexpectedly, so unplanned. I you know, I didn't use thumbnails. I didn't even have a description. Like I didn't use tags. I didn't even know what they were. And then I had this one video and it just went through the roof. And that was the snowball that got it all rolling. I, I guess this is where it comes to like, just keep going, have fun. I, I don't know. That's, it's a, such a hard question because there's such a huge element of luck with YouTube and Instagram and social media and, and hitting it big. And believe me, I recognize how lucky I am to be here and to have made a job and a career out of this. It's, it, it's incredible. It's an incredible opportunity. And it's not something that I feel like I even built myself in a lot of ways. It was a door that just happened to open for me. And uh, like, do you feel there was anything different about the video that took off initially for you? Can you tell us a bit about that video? Uh, yeah, so it was a before and after video. So basically I started the channel one year before 
and I filmed my house in the state that it was in and talked about how I was really upset and I, I didn't like that it was like that. And then I went through the year and kind of made a video every whatever, whenever I made them. I made like 40 videos. And then I made like a series of how to, like it was like a 21 day series, which ended up becoming a big part of my brand. So I made this series and that wasn't popular either, but I enjoyed doing it. And then I made this video that was an after. And so I showed my house before, the year before, and I showed it after and I kind of did commentary on it. And it was like, look where I was, look where I am now. And I, so I think it was like that makeover transformation before and after story kind of hit those big key points and it got found that way. So it was really just the whole story of that year in one video. And so, and so I think that maybe was kind of something that hit. And then, well, and then the other thing that happened that was great was I had this viral video, but it wasn't my first video. I had 45 videos. So people watched this and they were like, wow, look at the transformation she's made in a year. And then they wanted to see how I did it. So then they went back and then all the videos started getting tons of views. So it wasn't just that one. They all started going up and that 21 day process I did like exploded and everybody went back and watched all the old stuff too, to see how I had done it. Yeah, I once heard starting a YouTube channel as uh, like there was a metaphor used where starting YouTube channel is like starting a fire. Um, you kind of make a base. There's some kindling. Um, you have all the ingredients for a fire, um, but you kind of like a spark needs to happen. And in, in this metaphor, you don't necessarily have total control over the spark. But if you have all of the ingredients in place, eventually a spark is going to happen. Um, and I, I think the fact that you did have that big backlog, as yeah. you mentioned, like you had 45 videos, you finally had a video that took off, um, the fire started. Yeah. And once the fire starts, then, you know, I, I assume you just kept posting regularly and you just kind of kept feeding the fire. And it was pretty uh, intuitive after that. I mean, am I correct? Like, uh, yeah. it, it seems, again, like you mentioned, you don't really have a strategy. You kind of <laughs> just kept posting. I mean, and, and this is, and people will even say like, what equipment do I need to start? What this, I'm like, like, I use my like 2005 MacBook video that I would like put up on a chair on my couch to film myself. This was poor quality video. It's all about the content. You can have the best microphones. You can have the best cameras. You can have the best everything. It's about content. I see some channels that have horrific quality that are doing so great because whoever's running them is just doing a fantastic job. I mean, I'd love for them to have a better camera, but it's not... It's not the primary ingredient, right? Like you say, the primary ingredient is the spark, is the content. Yep, absolutely. Like, and it's, you know, getting caught up in equipment and the sort of, I don't know, these things that maybe you, people can't afford or they feel like it's not practical to buy them. Uh, like, it can kind of just weigh you down. So if you can just focus on the content and like, okay, you have this video idea that you really like, uh, just focus on making that. And yeah. I think that is the best you can do. Um, like it just beyond that, nothing really matters or rather everything else is secondary. Yeah. Uh, if you love nice equipment, like I have some fancy <laughs> cameras. I love my fancy cameras. Um, but also I started my YouTube channel with nothing but a Yeti microphone, yeah. um, which is a decent microphone. But uh, it was like $100, I think. Uh, it was good enough. And uh, yeah. with I had like a decent computer. Uh, I just was kind of editing clips together and talking about video games. Like, I don't know. It was like very simple. It was basic. It was yeah. very, very low budget. Well, I mean, super low budget. Yeah. And I think too, like I always say, expect that your first video is going to be terrible. It's not going to be good. Don't aim for perfection. It's going to, it's going to suck <laughs> because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> But every video after that gets a little bit better and you can do better mic, qual mic quality and better video quality and better content. And even speaking, I notice my editing is getting easier because I don't say um all the time anymore. And um, well, and you know, I, I can speak more mm. fluidly than I could at the beginning. So a lot of my editing has gotten easier. It gets better. You literally just have to start. It's like the first time you go swimming, you're gonna just sink, but you have to just keep going and soon you'll be just uh, going for it. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, your your camera presence just gets more comfortable as time goes on. 
Uh, like when I first started talking into a microphone, it felt really weird. It felt awkward. Uh, my voiceover was very forced. Um, I guess it was good enough. It hit a certain note that people were interested in, but uh, it now I like I watch old videos and I'm like, oh my god, why did anybody watch this? I don't get it. Uh, but now I <laughs> like now I'm at a point where I can kind of like be comfortable and entertaining without having to like put on that facade that I was putting on in the early days yeah. and trying really, really, really hard to be uh, somebody worth listening to or worth watching. Yeah. Uh, now I feel like I just kind of turn on the camera and I'm just like, oh, here I am. Here I go. Yeah. And it, it still works. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a peak where it's like low effort as you start out mm -hmm. and you're just trying things and then you're like really trying. And now I just kind of, I can whip off a video in like half an hour, edit it up and we're good to go. So yeah, it's gotten a lot more natural. <laughs> All right, so we're we're kind of hitting the forty five minute mark. Uh, we're we're getting towards the end here. So uh, around this time, I I usually like to ask people a sort of general question. So uh, my question to you is, how has YouTube changed your life in any way? Earlier, I asked you like, did YouTube give you more freedom? But uh, I'm going to throw you a more generic version of this question. Uh, what what does the before and after look like uh, before you started your channel versus after? YouTube has like given where you are now. Yeah. Um, I mean, besides the money, which is lots of fun, as I mentioned, YouTube has given me a platform to share myself as I truly am, which was something I struggled with my whole life. Um, it's, it's allowed me to open up and be more free with myself in my everyday life and be the person I wanted to be online, which is just myself, just my vulnerable and open and messy, slobby self. And so it's really let me bring down a lot of those barriers and just enjoy life a lot more and just have some fun with it and, and push forward for these goals. Right on. And so do you feel that YouTube, um, like the way you present yourself in front of the camera has kind of bled over into the way you just kind of show up to normal conversations in everyday life? Yeah, more so in the way that I'm more open to just sharing things that I'm struggling with instead of trying to keep everything together and pretend everything's fine. It's just let me know that people need to hear that you're struggling sometimes and they need to hear that you're not perfect and don't have everything together and life isn't just like a whole bowl of cherries all the time. And I'm not saying dump my whole life on people. I'm saying just be yourself, warts and all. Right. And uh, I think like maybe having this platform to express that um, maybe you you were able to kind of go through the trial and error um, on a platform where, you know, it, it took a while for people to actually start watching. Um, I, I've certainly found, like, I've been able to make a lot of mistakes in front of the camera um, that sort of, in a way, helped me be more comfortable uh, just talking to people in everyday life. Like, I'm pretty naturally introverted. Yeah. And the more I just kind of showed up and talked in front of a camera or a microphone, uh, the more comfortable I got being in social situations in general, you know, it, it kind of like alleviated a lot of social anxiety. You know, I don't know if that's something you've dealt with, but um, I've certainly felt that just kind of doing this and showing up has been very helpful in my personal life. Yeah, no, I'm like an extrovert <laughs> through and through. I don't have a problem talking in front of people, but I think more just being a little bit more <laughs> okay. genuine and uh, I don't know. I don't, I think my friends think it's okay but we're all like in our mid to late thirties and the people who really think it's cool is like my teenage nieces and nephews and my friends, teenage kids. They're like, Oh, can we see your silver play button? Like they think I'm cool. <laughs> so we have that to talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, uh, <laughs> I find the same thing. It's like the, the younger somebody is, the more they're like, Oh my God, you do YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's uh it's kind of funny how that works. Yeah. It's fun though. With that, we have come to the, the end of the show. Um, and this is the point where, Steph, I'll ask you to pitch all of your cool stuff. Where can people find you? What should they check out? Uh, what kind of, yeah, to tell all the beautiful people all the beautiful things you're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grant, for having me. It's so fun to talk about YouTube. I always talk about cleaning. So it's really fun to talk about a different passion in my life, which is making YouTube videos. Um, so you can find me on YouTube at The Secret Slob, on Instagram at 
the underscore secret underscore slob on my website www.thesecretslob you can find all my printables and my blogs and if you want to hear my sister and I get into trouble and just be borderline ridiculous you can find us over on the podcasting apps wherever you podcast uh, at the slob sisters podcast and that's a lot of fun and it's super low key and relaxed if you think I'm just going to tell you how to clean your house you are in for a a big surprise (laughs) because yeah it's just it's just a lot of fun so any of those places or also Facebook, we have a huge motivation and accountability group. If you're just starting out on your homemaking or housekeeping journey, join us over there. We have the greatest group of people ever. Again, trolls not welcome. And just get to know us on a more personal level. Right on. Well, thank you for sharing, Steph. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And with that, whoever you are watching or listening to this, make sure to like and subscribe so that uh, you can you can see me in the next one and I can see you. Uh, you will not be disappointed. And uh, with that, that's a wrap. Bye, everybody.